We're closing in on Thursday's deadline for Peyton Manning's $28 million bonus. But since he took a break from rehab and contract talks to watch the Duke North Carolina game, why can't we do the same? Defense wins championships, and if that saying holds true today in Super Bowl 46, the Giants are going to run away with this one. The Giants D has been playing lights out during this five game winning streak that they're currently on. In that final drive, a couple of key drops, Aaron Hernandez, the tight end. The drive before that, you had Wes Welker, who's always clutch, coming up with catches, didn't get it done. They did still have a chance, but what about Ahmad Bradshaw as well? <laughs> He almost took a knee, which would have gave the Giants the last couple seconds of the game, and there would be no chance for Tom Brady to go out and, and win this ball game. Well, you've been keeping yourself busy with the whole TV thing as well, since you don't have a racing team at the moment. So I'm going to hand the duties off to you to send it back to the studio. How about that? Thank you. Live at the Speedway, I'm Dan Weldon, and you're watching Fox 59 Sports. I was hearing he was trying to get Larry Bird to jump in the mix and help him out. Would it be a bird Hibbert combo? Him, you have what? to watch, tune in and watch. Oh, so I get no, no info no here. No info. This is, this is a safe right here, you know. The Colts would end up being able to rally and get some sort of drive, sustained drives. They did that in the first half. I think things looked a lot better there. The only evidence for what could have been for Purdue against seventh-ranked Michigan State was featured in the basketball notes that the media received before tip-off. The projected starting lineup, DJ Bird, Kelsey Barlow. Andrew Luck hasn't started looking for a place to live in Indianapolis just yet, but he has begun his conversations with the Indianapolis Colts last night, meeting with the Horseshoes quarterbacks coach Clyde Christensen during an informal interview for just a few short minutes. Then this afternoon, it was the media's turn to bombard Luck with a number of questions and the main topic of conversation Peyton Manning, the four-time NFL MVP, he might replace someday if the Colts draft him with the number one overall pick. I understand that is a possibility. Uh, I understand how much, you know, Peyton was my hero growing up. He was my football hero. You know, that's who I wanted, who I modeled myself after, you know, in high school and middle school, whatever it was. But, uh, you know, you, so you never truly re replace a guy like that. And, and who knows what happens? Who knows what happens? So many different things can happen. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not thinking about it too much right now. Luck confirming today he will not throw at the combine, will go through the regular drills. He is preferring to wait until his pro day in California on March 22nd. That way he'll have his own receivers with him. Also coming up on Live at 5, much more on Andrew Luck and what he has to say about the possibility of playing behind Peyton Manning. For now, let's send it back to you in the studio. The Colts offense was anything but electric today against the Falcons. 186 total yards and zero touchdowns. In the fourth quarter, the Colts pulled starter Curtis Painter for Dan Orlovsky just to supply some sort of spark. Things weren't going, you know, at that point in time. We just weren't made an adjustment. I mean, it just, uh, um, you know, Curtis is still our starting quarterback. You know, we just uh, wanted to see if we can change the pace a little bit. We changed a few guys. He wasn't the only one. You know, just a tough day. Um, I don't, you know, think I played, you know, quite well enough to, uh, you know, to win the ball game. You know, made a few mistakes. So, uh, you just got to be better. Got to be sharper. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Continue to go out there and prepare the right way, and practice the right way, and play the right way. And, and um, would he like to be able? To, I'm sure to score more points and win. Yeah, absolutely. All of us would. But it's kind of, um, you know, the situation we're in. So the Colts put themselves in a hole early. Their second play of the game, a fumble by Delon Carter that led to a Falcons score. The Horseshoes' next possession, a Curtis Painter interception. The Colts now have a negative eight turnover ratio, the fifth worst margin in the league this season. This ain't the first time I've had a turnover early in a game, and you got to keep playing. I mean, you know, you got to go back and next drive, take it down and score, and we just didn't do it. We never answered a call and, and uh, just didn't play well enough. After a number of close losses early in the season, the Colts don't even look competitive anymore. They've been outscored 120 to 24 the past three games. We're just getting out executed, you know. Um, we're working hard, we come to work every single day. We're just getting out executed right now. You talk about though not giving up. How do you not though at 9 Because we're grown men. We're, we're professionals. You know, who wants to continue to get their head beat in? You know. Um, 
you know, just some kind of way. You just got to you got to figure it out. As if 0 and 9 isn't enough, the Colts offense struck by another big blow. Tight end Dallas Clark exited today's game with a lower leg injury. Head coach Jim Caldwell says they'll know more about his diagnosis in the next 24 to 48 hours. At Lucas Oil Stadium, Brittany Deal, Fox 59 Sports. We start off in the Horizon League Tournament. Butler facing top-seeded Valparaiso in the semifinals last night. The teams have squared off more than 100 times on the courts, but this is the first ever meeting for the Crusaders and Bulldogs in the tournament. Butler hoping to keep their NCAA tournament hopes alive. Things started off well. Krishan Hopkins missed the free throw. Cameron Woods gets the rebound, passes it to Hopkins, the jumper. Bulldogs lead by five. But then Valpo gets hot. Eric Bugs, the top of the key, hits the tray. The Crusaders up by 11. The Bulldogs rally at the end of the first. Right before the half, Eric Fromm gets the rebound off the missed free throw, puts in the bucket. Butler trailed by just seven at the half. Valparaiso, though, rolls, knocks Butler out of the Horizon League tournament 65 to 46. The first loss in March for the Bulldogs in their last 14 games. No big dance for a team that had made it to back-to-back -back national championship games. Well, downtown at Bankers Life Fieldhouse, the final four of the Women's Big Ten Tournament. 25th ranked Purdue out to add to their record seven tournament titles matched up with the one seed Penn State in the semis. The Nittany Lions won the regular season conference title and beat Purdue a few weeks ago. The Boilers had other plans tonight. Second half, Courtney Moses spots up, hits the three. She finished with 21. Penn State would rally back to tie it with 30 seconds left. Nikki Green gets the layup to go, brings things even at 66. Purdue has the final answer with time kicking down. Brittany Rayburn drives inside off the glass and in no time for Penn State to do anything. The Boilers knock down the one seed, your final 68 to 66 Purdue. The Boilermakers will play Nebraska in the Big Ten tournament title game tomorrow at 4 o'clock. It was kind of a redirect play and you know we, we kept saying take it to the basket, don't settle for an outside shot and I had plenty of time to get it to the basket. Dr. Rayburn, how's your heart rate? <laughs> it's way up here. <laughs> it's probably unhealthy right now, but it uh, feels good. And down south in the Crescent City, Pacers playing in Danny Granger's hometown in New Orleans and the former NBA home of David West. Speaking of West, there he drives baseline, ties the game at 33 in the second quarter. Pacers now on the fast break. Darren Collison streaking in. Blue and gold up 39-33. West dishing it out now to Granger from three-point land. It's good. Few seconds to go in the first half. Granger at the charity stripe, misses the free throw. Pacers get the rebound, and Collison at the buzzer as he falls back and does a little flip. Pacers close out the second quarter on a 21-4 run. They led at the break 54-37. Pacers go on to get the victory 102-84. The blue and gold have racked off six straight Ws, and they're off to their best start in seven years, sitting at 23-12 on the season.